Hey guys, this is Shay Jose, and today we'll be doing a little bit of a remake of Marsh's remix of Andy Moore's The White Rooms. So if you dig this track, then definitely follow along. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll have the entire rack and the preset available for my patrons to download from the link below. So guys, let's get into the tutorial. So um, if you've listened to Marsh's productions, you'll know that he's a big fan of uh, that kind of old school um, early 2000s, 90s sort of rave sort of style um, of house music. Like, he uses a lot of the um, Rolling Cloud suite, um, you know, kind of the Show Me Love uh, bass line that Stonebridge used um, when he created that remix. Um, so he, he's very much into that sort of sound, which uh, kind of makes him stand out from anything else that's kind of out there today, which is pretty cool. Um for this particular lead sound, uh, what he's done is actually he's recreated the um, the lead sound by um, recycling a sample that he's been using in a lot of his productions. Um, I think the first time he used it was in Heaven. Um, he's also used it in this production of uh, The White Room. So what I'll do is actually I'll do a breakdown of, of how he's actually created this. Uh, and you can follow this along. Uh, and create it from scratch if you want. If you don't want to use my uh, join my Patreon and actually download the sample, um, or you, if you are part of the Patreon program, you'll be able to get this. Uh, I'll give you essentially the entire rack so you can use this in your productions. So um, let's get into it. So um, the first time I actually saw uh, this sample being used was in a YouTube uh, by Biscuit, um, which he did. Uh, with another couple of producers in an episode called uh, One Sample for Producers, I believe. And essentially what they do is they use a sample from a really old game called um, The Last of Us, I think, or Among Us or something like that. And it sounds like this. And essentially that's all it is. And what these guys did is they basically used this sample to create an entire track with it which is pretty cool actually if you haven't seen it uh definitely look for it it's quite entertaining anyway so get back to how marsh has actually done this so what he's been doing is actually grabbing this tail end of this um this horn and he's actually been putting this into a sampler or i think he uses battery from memory um as he's been pitching pitching up this sample and processing it in such a way to make a lead out of it so i thought i'll try and recreate the same thing here in ableton um, for anyone that does use Ableton and doesn't have battery, to be able to get this lead. So, the way I've done it is, uh, I've simply just grabbed a uh, sampler and grabbed this particular sample and dumped it in there. Um, so, if we go back in here. Um, so, we've got the sample in here at the moment. And what I've done is I've just pitched this up by 12 semitones, so it sounds a little bit more... Um, what I might do is just turn off all the processing on this. So you can hear what it sounds like and disable all the sense. Um, and I'll let you hear how that sounds like. Um, if it comes through, no, it's not playing. So pretty crap, pretty static, nothing too exciting there. So what I ended up doing is we're just um, pitch shifting this up by 12 semitones uh, to give it a, to basically take it up to the same range uh, from the lead that Marsh created for the white rooms. That's really like if you listen to it, that's pretty much the lead there. Um, what I've done is also cut the sample a little bit, so it, it had this kind of weird ringing at the start of it. So what I've done is I've just kind of um, chopped the sample up to where you have the majority of the attack on the sound. Um, I've gone into the filter envelope here and just adjusted the sustain um, and the decay um, because it was sounding uh, basically when you have this uh, essentially when you dump this sample into the into the sample it kind of sounds like this which was just way too too long so what I did is I dropped in the sustain put a filter envelope because there's a little bit of harsh uh, frequencies right at the start there and just kind of adjusted it to taste um, the other thing I ended up doing on this from memory, if I can find where it was. Uh, there we go. I just, um, I detuned it slightly, about 24 cents, um, uh, as I found that it basically 
didn't quite match the pitch of the original uh, lead that Marsh did on White Rooms and the Morse track. Okay, so once we do that, um, I just added a utility for a little bit of extra volume in there. Um, now you can, the, the trick in this sound is pretty much there. It's actually very simple. Now, what you can do is you can either use the stock effects um, within Ableton to actually get the kind of triplet sort of or the eighth dotted sound uh, by using a delay. Um, or you can use something like Echo Boy Junior, which is what I did. So um, what I ended up doing is just EQing the sound because it has some really harsh frequencies and dropping down some of the frequencies around 2K. Um, and Yusuf Sengo MSD, which is pretty cool. I know he's done this before. I saw in one of his tutorials where he's actually just dropped the mid a little bit and expanded the size stereo by about 3 dB um, just to make it a little bit wider. So that kind of gives it a little bit more stereo width. Uh, he's then added an Echo Boy. And like I said, you can do this with delay, but I've got Echo Boy Junior, so which is it's just great. I love I love these using this, this uh, particular plugin. On a 1 8 dotted, and this will give you the kind of triplet sort of sound um, uh, as the lead plays through. So... The last and final touch is actually uh, adding some reverb to taste. Now, what I ended up doing is I actually used two reverbs on these. I used the normal standard reverb and a hybrid reverb. Um, I found that the normal reverb was giving it a little bit of width, but the hybrid reverb gave it, gave it a nice kind of shimmer uh, sound to it that really kind of complemented the sound. So by adding both of them at 100%, um, oh, let me add both of them in here in a little sense. It basically sounds now like this. Now, what you can do is actually put a um, a compressor if you wanted to at the end of each one of these reverbs to actually tame the reverb tail uh, between each one of the um, pluck uh, hits. Um, just to tame it a little bit so it doesn't clash with it. Um, but basically, that's really it. It's a very, very, very simple sound. And like I said, I will actually have all this ready for you to download and use in your own productions, um, basically, uh, from the link below. If you're on my Patreon, just sign up to the Patreon. You'll be able to get this in, and a bunch of other uh, lead sounds in there. Um, so together with a track, uh, I will let you hear how this sounds like. That's it, guys. It's like a very, very quick, very simple uh, sort of tutorial today. Like I said, there's not a hell of a lot to this, uh, uh, which is just essentially just a bit of processing on a sample. I guess the trickiest part was trying to get that sample to sound just right. Um, so you can follow this along. Uh, like I said, it's very simple. You just be able to find uh, the original sample and chop it up and then kind of tweak it to taste depending on what door you're using. Or if you're using Ableton, this entire rack will be available for you to kind of download with a sample uh, to use in your production. So uh, until next time, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, link is below. And also um, make sure you check out my Spotify at Shea Jose. I've got a bunch of new tracks coming out. Uh, and it'll be great if uh, I can get some support and subscribe on these channels. So until next time, guys, take care.